Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Thank Him for His Word. Thank Him. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks. First Timothy chapter four verse seven to eight. First Timothy chapter four verse seven to eight. I want to read something, and then I'm going to I'm going to break something in in a few minutes by the Spirit of God by His grace. And if you walk out of this room normal after what you've just heard and hearing this, I am sure you're not human. <laughs> no, I didn't. Don't get me wrong. I am sure you, you would not be human. And this, this, if you have a human part on you, praise the Lord. If you're not an animal, if you have a human part on you, you will not go back to sin. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because God wants to elevate you above human nature. Huh? Get it? The Bible says, but refuse. Seven, verse seven. But refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thine selves. Rather, unto godliness. The Bible says, exercise yourself rather unto godliness. The Bible says, exercise. Gunasmo, exercise. Like somebody goes in a gym and starts to build up muscle. You understand? That's a person exercising. Hallelujah. The Bible says, exercise yourself unto godliness. I have realized it's possible for a man to exercise himself unto godliness. Like you can exercise yourself as a human being and then get muscle, physical. You can also exercise yourself in the spirit and get muscle. Like you can, you can exercise yourself in the physical and be fit. You can also exercise yourself to be flexible in the spirit. Hallelujah. But you must understand that the human nature, to its degree of exercise, and to how far it can exercise, it is still subject to natural laws. When we're talking of the spirit man, the Bible says that the second man is the Lord from above. He comes with the spirit of lordship from above. That man is not subject to natural laws. Yet, he still has the opportunity to exercise in what is not natural. I don't really understand where I'm coming from. Did you get it? It's okay for me to exercise my body, but I'm still subject to the gravity force. If I jump, I'll go. I'll be fit in my body, but I'll still be subject to gravity. I'm talking of a man who's not subject to gravity. And the spirit still tells him, you can still exercise. Oh, 
Do you, whether you understand, I don't know if they understand. I, I'm talking about a man who he's, he's not subject to natural law. He is an entity of spiritual law. But even being an entity of spiritual law, the Bible says he can still exercise himself. He can become better, an entity by the Spirit. For he says, for, for bodily exercise, profit as little, verse 8. For bodily exercise, the Bible says, profit as little. But he says, but godliness is profitable unto all things. I mean all. It's profitable. Godliness. I want to give you something that can give you an answer in every atmosphere and sphere of your life. He said, godliness is profitable unto all things. The Bible says, having the promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. That means you are persuaded that in this life you walk supernatural. But not only in this life, you also function crazy in heaven. Ah. Give me the message version of this. Let me read for you something wonderful. For it. He says, work out in the gymnasium. A what? A useful. He says, but a disciplined life in God is far more so. Making you fit both today and forever. That means that there's, there's a discipline in the spirit that can exercise you and to godliness. It's possible. You see, I wish they understand. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. Great is the mystery. It's not small. You can't undermine it. He says, great is the mystery of godliness. He says, he came in the body. He was justified by the spirit. Some versions use the word vindicated. The Bible says he was seen by the angels. He was preached on the world. The world beheld him. The Bible says he went up in glory. He says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. He says, God was manifest in the flesh. And that's your story. You are a God manifest in the flesh. You're not a man trying to get God in you. <laughs> you are a God because you're a child of God manifest in the flesh. What's the next line? He says, he appeared in the body, was vindicated by the Spirit. You had an existence before you owned this body. And that existence was not the beginning of the carnal man life called a human being. Because the human being was the one breathed into the breath of life and became a living soul. That was the death of birth on the earth. That was a new death of birth in the heaven. The heavens say, before you were, <laughs> before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. And the word there for knowing is intercourse. I had intercourse with you. We were one. We had a certain line of oneness. I knew you, he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you. And he said, and I called you to be a prophet among nations. The calling of God supersedes your existence on the earth. It was there before you even came in your mother's womb. It was functioning before you even made it function. It is desperate in you for you to function through you. Then you are desperate for it to function. Why? Because it pre-existed before your bodily form. You came in the body. That's why Jesus sees the same thing. Paul sees it. He says, I, uh, you are in them. He didn't even give them names, but you're not of them. He says, even though you're in them, yes, we sit in the same taxi. Yes, we eat on the same table. Yes, we can sit on the same computer. Yes, we can sit in the same restaurant. But man, when I look at my body, I say, boy, oh boy, can you believe your different DNA? How can they put a bomb in that restaurant and they blow you? How? They blow them, not you. Because when they are planning, they are planning to blow them. They can't plan to blow you. Car accidents have to wait. Until you come out. Why? Because they are not for this nature. The, na the natural law can determine that at a certain speed, an object tripping can cause damage. Natural law. Spiritual law is different. If this object moves at a certain speed, and it's causing a man to be whichever way he is, the spirit can come out of that object. Ah. One more good take it, Amusumba. The spirit can simply come out of that object. Because our experiences are beyond anything 
that moves in a circle. The wheels on the bus go around and around. Car accident is not your story. Hallelujah. Why? Because you hit the earthly heavens. You hit the cosmopolitan heavens. You went past that level. You're past that level. He says, I know a man. Paul is even confused. He says, I may not know this man, but I know of a man. I don't know whether in the body or out of the body, but I saw a man who was transformed. He was translated to the fourth, third dimension, sorry, the Bible says, of the spirit. And he says, and he saw things which were not lawful to utter. The Amplified says things the human la- language could not put in words. Now, if a man under a certain law can get words that the human language can't put in words, how can that man enter earth with a certain language and fail? Oh, God. Because already the dictionary in your spirit is bigger than human dictionary. The articulations of the spirit to execute are way different from the way they execute. Why? You've been at a place where you can speak. That's why Paul says, even if you speak with tongues of men and angels. That means, Paul introduced us to a, a, a dimension where a man can communicate to the angelics like they are talking. That's not an unknown tongue. And I don't think that tongue makes the man's mind unfruitful. I don't know that you understand what I'm trying to say. That we get to a point where you can see somebody going to have an accident. You tell your angel and tell angel, manna karele brosile kesi. Pandele lebro korianda la hadile. Angel says, yes sir. The Bible calls them the ministers. The Bible calls them the ministers of the earth of salvation. He gets the guy a wah. Then the cup passes. Tell the angel, let's go. You don't even look for pictures. Say, that's me baby. Come on. I do that every time. I, no, no. You don't like be like DJ Wesley. You understand? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Now if he says, I went to a place where no, I had words. The human language could not put in words. I, I had things that if I tried to explain them in the human language, the man speaking who saw was not human anymore. You get it? No, no. He said, he could have said the words I could not put. No, no. He said the words. He said, I had words that the human language could not put in words. They, they cannot put. Give me the amplified. This man, God. He says, he was caught up in the paradise. And he had, listen, utterances beyond the power of a man to put into words. The Bible says, which no man is permitted to utter. That means, at that level, at that level, if we are using the Amplified, no man is permitted. There is a place, oh, now I know why Paul says, and this I speak with permission. There, there are places of access. There are those of utterance by the Spirit. Where Paul doesn't just speak. No, he speaks because he has a certain permission. So when Paul says, and this I speak by permission, he's not just speaking because he's saying, Father, can I speak? No. He's saying because he has been elevated to a nature that can speak a certain language past human language. And the moment your life starts to be dispensed in that, you realize that the cause of the manifestation of God upon your life starts to take a different turn. You see, there's a miracle of laying a hand on a blind eye and it sees. But there's a miracle of a man thinking about you and his eyes open. Why? Because there should have been a language that appealed to his mind. That appealed to his mind to think you. The commending ourselves to the consciences of men through speaking the truth. The standard of the truth causes us to commend ourselves to the consciences of men. Not only men, but things. That when the road, when the road, when the road, when ginger road in the morning, when it's cold, for example, some people are going to work. It can be okay for people to pass. But the moment you come, Ginger Road knows, Pastor is passing. 
Ginger root does every look look at remember the language. It says, Do not worry about what you should drink. For tomorrow has its own to worry. That means tomorrow servants is thinking Apostle Christ is going to eat what? Apostle Christ is going to eat what? Apostle Christ is going to eat what? Why is he going to dress? His shoes, are they clean? You understand what I'm saying? Because, because it has a place to worry about the air of salvation. Tomorrow has its own to worry. Then you also start, ah, open that one at the office. Can I make it? I don't know where it is. Listen, listen. Listen. God has opened your eyes to understand. Now, you read scriptures, but I don't know whether I think them through. He says, For we know that all things work, that's the word I was looking for, together, in union, in joint effort. That means that the rain works with the sun, with electricity. To give you the road that you desire for the fuel of the car that you put on, for the clothes that you look, of the mobile phone that you use, for the airtime you must load, to put WhatsApp for the MBs of the Twitter, for the Skype which must have La Bonita and La Bonita for the... Oh! Thank you, Katara Mandis. You see that all things now work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purposes. To his purposes. You're like a spiritual magnet. Ah, you remember Paul? Paul said, brethren, we are persuaded. No, no, we are not believing. He says, we are persuaded of greater things which are company. The word we have for company means like magnetic attraction. He says, we are perfected. We are persuaded of the things which magnetically attach themselves to the heirs of salvation. The moment you're walking like this, a good car sees you and he says, ah! Over who am I preaching to? He says, we are persuaded of better things of you. Things that accompany, that follow, that have a magnetic attraction to the heirs of salvation. And he says, and thus we speak. We speak things that must follow you, not things you must follow. Listen, I am so sure Look at marriage. Look at marriage. For example, if you're here and you believe in God for marriage. He said, read through the books. Search out. For none shall lack. The Bible didn't say amet. Hamet. Already wet. Chagwata. He says, for the Spirit has gathered them even before they meet. For the Spirit has gathered them. Then you find a woman saying, God, I need a man. He says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Don't seek in newspapers. Hey, I'm going to sing a maudi this morning and no one. You find a Christian going in love in a love magazine saying, I'm 23, 25, born again, single, searching for 25 year old, must be God fearing, simanya bichi. That is for the world. You won't lack yours. Hallelujah. I am persuaded you get married. I am persuaded you'll be a success. I am persuaded you'll increase. I am persuaded you're increasing. I am persuaded you're multiplying. I am persuading you're coming out. I am persuading you. Come on. I am persuaded. I am pers- thinking. Let me say it in Luganda. Why? I have overcome. I'm not hoping to. No. I am so sure I'm a success today. I am so sure. And listen, we are pers- believing God for, we are persuaded of better things that accompany salvation. Like a man would come into another Christian's life and say, I see your grandfather's demon. And the prophet is persuaded. Even me, I am persuaded that I see you exalted. I see you honored. I see you increased. I see, I see, I see you glorious. I see you do great. You're better tomorrow than you are today. Now, when you start attending such meetings like this one, even if you say, let me try to refuse it. Metal magnet. 
Tolina choice. Tolina. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's working. Say it's working. Then I stumbled on a former scripture on Joel. That many Christians have often misunderstood. Also recorded in Acts 2.17. He says, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. You remember that? And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. You remember that? For long, I thought I understood that portion of scripture. Because I had many men preach it until they removed the soup out of it. You get it? So to speak, I'm sorry. TIA. This is Africa. To call me direct translation. I. What is that? Every time I would read in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. Young men shall prophesy. All men shall dream dreams. Blah, 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 blah. I used to think, oh, so this saying that the spirit of God is going to come, pour on our flesh, and our flesh is going to function in a certain way that is super unique. You get it? And let me show you something. Peter, let me show you a mystery. Tell your neighbor, behold a mystery. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. We're going to come back. Because the Spirit asked me a question. He asked me, what happens when the Spirit settles on flesh? First Peter 1.23 The Bible says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed. Okay? That means you can't be corrupted. Like a watch that has been made to move clockwise. It can't move anti-clockwise. Because it was configured clockwise. So you can't put a law on the clock to tell it, don't move anti-clockwise. Because it's already patterned to move clockwise. It's like, when they say you are the righteousness of God, you are the righteousness of God, clockwise. That means, you have the blessing of the incorruptibility on that line. Of entity called righteousness. It can't be reversed. Why? Because the Bible says that the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. They are without repentance. Okay? Now, because God can't take it away from you, there is a set law in your spirit. You see, you must understand how God works. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Psalms that he has set a law in Israel and a testimony in Jacob. You get it? What, what you call testimony is a law. When you understand the laws that govern the spirit world, you realize that those are the very things that produce testimony in your life. If the testimony of your life cannot point you to a particular law in the spirit, you will never know how to respond, to replicate, duplicate, multiply the very seed working on you. And therefore you'll start moving on chance. Yet God, listen, has not appointed the Christian to move on chance. The Bible says he has appointed every man their own time and their boundary of habitation. If peradventure the Bible says they might what? They might seek after him. If happily, they'll feel after him. Every man in this life has an appointed time. Every man has an appointed time. Every man in this spirit world has an appointed time. For you to... You get it? But you see, that appointed time is not subject to a time frame the Lord has put for you to adapt. No. The appointed time is subject... To the grace of revelation distributed to you. That is why he quotes the very experience in Isaiah. And says, having ears they hear not. Having eyes they see not. Least their ears would open and their eyes would see. And Jesus says, at any time. That they might be what? Converted and I should heal them. Least at any time. That means that God has placed the place of revelation in your spirit. To Revelation is, is the time. Revelation is the time. The moment it comes. And that's why he creates the clearest law in the middle and says, for the revealed things belong. He said, belong. The moment, revelation, the moment it is revealed, then it belongs. 
The moment it reveals, pay it, magnet. The moment it is revealed, it is yours. So when he says, I have appointed every man their own timing. You have a time to access revelation. And the consequent things that accompany revelation. Because revelation, the Greek word for revelation is translated as God's redemptive power. Revelation must have a certain entity called redemption. It must redeem something. Now, if we are talking of places where now the Bible says, let us redeem the time. Do you realize he's not talking about time anymore? He didn't say let us redeem time. He says, let us redeem the time. That means there is the time eternal. The things that you must do and put them in the earthly timing that men might look at and see the life of God functioning in you to quicken you faster than any human could. God has not created you to live a life that is like men or human beings. Human beings are slow. They are very slow. They are slow to think. They are slow to plan. They are slow to innovate. They are slow to invent. They are slow to prayer. They are slow to respond. They are slow to move by impulse. Human beings are way slower. Look at a man in the Old Testament. Just human. No more human being. Elijah. He just gets one quickening of the spirit and he's running faster than horses. That is not even a born again creature. The born again creature comes in like manner with divine assignment. He's not even given opportunity to run. He's just given opportunity to disappear and appear in another place. He speaks to the Ethiopian eunuch. And after speaking to the Ethiopian eunuch, Holy Ghost tells him we must have another meeting in Brazil. Do you understand where we are going? Do you understand where we are going? And immediately the Bible says he had baptized the man and he brought him out of water. <laughs> Philip didn't leave a business card. Call me. Did you get it? And this happened in the New Testament. And a Christian says, I'm believing God for a visa. Something is about to change. Something is about to change. Something is about to change. Listen, I'm not talking of a place where you leave your body. Uh -uh. And then you go in the spirit to Turkey. Uh -uh. I'm talking of the place where you leave your body. And then you sit and you say, uh -uh, I need you for the man to see the physical arts. And then you go with your body to Turkey. Oh. I don't know what I'm speaking to. I told people one day, I was driving, I reached Shell Bogolovi, I was sleeping, I fell asleep. I drove like five kilometers, I just woke up, I woke up on the gate, five kilometers away from the time I slept. There must have been a transportation. Uh -uh, that day I don't think angels drove my car. No, 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 no. I was not half asleep, half awake, no. I slept. And I woke up on the gate. Boom. And I looked back. I saw. Dee -dee -dee -dee. It took me three months to sober. Uh -uh. You see. Let me tell you. Even the angelics. Respond. To the mind. Of burden. You get it. The fact that it burdens me to do certain things, the angelic is sent to respond. Ask him. One time we're going to preach. And then Apostle Manoza, he was with Morris. And then I was driving. And then I reached the gate. And then I said, Who is going to open for us the gate? What happened? Speak. I said, Who is going to open for us the gate? And it was old. He said, Oh. oh. Then it came and got the second. Like, no wind, no nothing, no, no, no scientific, no, no engineering man. Asked Michael, Emma, you saw that? He said, Yeah, I drove in. And to tell you how humorous God is, he can tell you, it came back again and closed. Is it true? Man, we are something. 
we are something. And that's what I'm speaking in your life. That you start to see supernatural responses of spiritual laws. Respond to your pattern. Respond to your pattern. When London College one time, and then we reached the meeting, and there were only 10, or about 10, 11 kids. And then I asked the Lord, did you send me to these little things? 10 only. God told me, no, it's a whole school. I said, what? Whole school? He said, yeah. So he told me, how do you want it? You know, I love God. He's, he's like, He's like that guy who gets you in the, in, the, in the restaurant and asks you, do you want the boils, the, the eggs boiled or fried? Do you want them white or scrambled? Do you want green pepper or milk? You get it? You the milk. Do you want it skimmed or fresh? Do, how do you want the coffee? Do you want it coffee or tea? You get it? He asked me, how do you want it? And I said, I'm going to speak on these bodies to become magnets. And then I asked them, how many of you were born again? The nine put up and one did. I told them in the name of Jesus, just go out and touch anybody. And tell them, follow me. Two words. The kids just went out. Follow me. 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 In four minutes, I didn't have where to stand. You find a boy with jeans which are ending here. He's coming. He doesn't know why he's following Praise God. Now, the Bible says, let, let's read down to the this before we finish. It says, you've been born of an incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. He says, it liveth and abideth. It liveth and abideth forever. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It liveth. That means it's alive. And abideth. It stays forever. Next verse. For all. Listen. He quoted Isaiah. We're going to come to Isaiah. But let's read here. He says, For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. He says, The grass withers, and the flower thereof falleth away. Okay? Next line. And he says, For the, but the word of God, or the Lord, endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel, by the gospel, which by the gospel, which by the gospel, it could be another way, but by the gospel is preached to you. Now let's go to Isaiah. Peter skipped a line. I think he was rushing. Isaiah 40, verse 5. Let's read the very one. He says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Remember the Jude experience, I shall pour my spirit on all flesh. And all flesh shall See together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. It takes us back to the act experience and the Jude experience of Him bringing up the Spirit of all flesh. For every flesh shall see the glory. The glory is the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's continue. He says, Then the voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? And he said, All flesh is grass. And all the godliness thereof is as the flower of the field. All the glory. You see that? Glory, glory, godliness, like Peter said. Next verse. Now listen to a mystery. The grass withereth. See what Peter left out. The flower fadeth because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is the grass. What do you think about that? Do you think God is interested in anointing your flesh and you stay flesh? Okay, but not it again. The Spirit of God wants to blow the grass and its glory. So when He says, I shall pour out my spirit, you have understood it? I shall pour my spirit upon all flesh. He wants the Spirit to get on you to a place where your flesh withers and its glory fades away. Before they know it, you are a body. But you don't function like a body. Jesus, Jesus comes in like form. He comes in like form. The Bible says, and while they were praying, he appeared to them. He just appeared. He didn't open the door. 
He didn't pass through a window. He appeared. And the Bible says in John, and this is not made perfect, that you might have confidence on that day. For as he is, so are we in this world. He didn't say in heaven. That means God wants to raise a certain guy who by the Spirit of God can go through a wall. But the, listen, why? Because the law that, 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 that refuses you, that confounds you as human, cannot confound you anymore. Why? Because when you meet that wall, you don't meet it as a human being. You meet it as a God. Don't you take it me? If God can pass through a wall, his son should not question how. Yet you can touch him and feel the scars. That means by choice, he can choose the nature but still maintain their appearance. That's why the Bible now uses the language, he took on the likeness of a man. You can, you're like men. You're not men. You, he, he took on the form of a servant and took on the likeness of a man. You're like men. You're not men. Muringa man. Yes, that's why I say the not that the gods have come to us in the likeness of men. He didn't say that the men have come to us in the likeness of God. The gods have come in the likeness. It's a nature issue. So, when he says that the glory of the flesh, oh sorry, the flesh, which is the grass, and its flower, both wither and fade away because the spirit of God bloweth on them. When we go back to Jude, when he says, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. In simpler terms, I will wither flesh and its glory. I will wither flesh and its glory. Look at Paul in the book of Acts. Let, let me first define this. I'm not Colossians chapter 2. Give me something in verse 1. Let me show you how a man thinks. Paul. I'm just giving you a sample. He says, For I would that you know what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not my seen my face in the flesh. That means there are men who have seen Paul in the, in the spirit by face. Ah. Now, do you understand the place where we commend ourselves to the consciences of men? One time, Merab is my witness. I went and appeared to a woman in Entebbe the night before I was supposed to have a preaching engagement. And then the next day, she saw me. She says, oh my God. Oh my God. I saw this man in my dreams. I saw this man in my dreams. I saw him. You see, it's not magic. It's who we are. It's who we are. Tell your neighbor, stop being human. Mugambi, stop being human. Just stop being human. She says, I saw this man. I, I saw him. I saw him last night. I saw him. I told her, yes. You see, remember Pilate's wife? You remember that? Huh? When, when, when they were going to crucify Jesus, he, Jesus looked for a soft spot on Pilate. He realized that the wife was a soft spot. He came at night in the spirit and troubled her. And the next day the scripture says, the wife of Pilate says, let the man go for he troubled me in the night. So the man is responding because somebody's wife lost sleep. If a guy gives you a headache, give a headache to his wife. Tell her the next day, the wife is the one interceding for you. But it's not Mureke. No, 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 no. There is something you communicated to the wife. And that's how we get jobs. You just get one influential guy on the panel. And then you go at night and then you start to reap a kashata. Makarabababa. I just need one guy with influence. Makarabababa. Zilelebara. The moment you go for an interview, they tell him good morning. Tell him good morning. What's your name? My name is so and so. 
Just as I said, I like this guy already. Just hire him. Just... Tell your neighbor it's possible. Tell him it's possible. And that's how favor pursues us. There is a way you can minister to men without speaking. If you even say it to wives in Peter, that without communication, that you might what? Speak to your husbands. Without words, you might communicate. Without words, you might communicate. That chase conversation. As they behold that beauty. You see, he's talking of an experience where a woman can speak without words. Because he knows women only fight with words. And it's He's saying the only way you can... He's saying without words you will communicate. You don't always need to communicate by words. In this life and the next, you don't always need to speak to everything. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the one, they also may, without the one, be one by the conversation. For you, you think everybody must listen to the words you say. No, you're a human being. There are words that the human being cannot put in words. Yet they can still be communicated to a human being or a spirit. It's called functioning above the human nature. It's just functioning above the human nature. And it's possible. Now, let's go back to Colossians. I want to show you something. He says, for many, I have an issue with you. For them that are of this year, and as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. That means I have a face in the spirit. You might have seen my flesh, my face in the spirit. But I have to come and speak to you guys who have not seen my face in the flesh. I carry a certain identity in the spirit that's also a face. Next verse. Look at this. That their hearts might be comforted. Being knit together in love. Is that so? And to the riches of full assurance, understanding the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Jesus Christ. Next verse. In whom we hear, I hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Next verse. And this I say, lest any man should what? Beguile you with what? Enticing words. Next verse. And to show you something. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit. Drawing, drawing means when they make praise. Paul in prison knows the church is praising. Then you just see a man dancing. But you think he's mad. No, he's not mad. He knows the time when they draw. You understand? The time when you say, Hallelujah! When Paul is not in the meeting, he knows they're shouting, Hallelujah. You just see Paul saying, Amen. You see that kind of connection? Oh! When that thing starts to function in your life, you don't need to send Johnson a WhatsApp message. No. You tell him, make haste and come to me. Without text message, no Facebook account, no telephone. It's the sons of this generation. The Bible says they are wiser than the sons of light in their generation. Why? At least they invented a place where a man can communicate to another with distance. Yet this was a normal human mind. They are trying to leap into the things that are supposed to be natural with the children of God. We ought not to be communicating anymore by WhatsApp messages sometimes. Oh. We ought to be in a place where I can send a message to you. And then you send a message back to me without a phone. That's the only way they cannot track you. Come on somebody. If the sons of this earth can do it, the children of God can do better. What do you think, brother, upstairs? And I said, how come the guys in the world can do it? I don't know how, but a man imagined that there must be some waves that flow through unseen phenomena, but have the consequence of a receiver end that can encode, decode, create a communication line with a person without necessarily them being present. They thought this. They thought this. They thought this. These are sons of men. 
but they can think to that level. How much more the sons of God? We ought not to even think on that level. We ought to be communicating on that level. On a level where I don't need a mobile phone to tell Timothy, I need him in Tarsus. He says, for though I am with you in the spirit, he says, I am joined with you. And, he says, I'm joined. That means I'm laughing, I'm celebrating you. But look at the next line. And beholding your order. This is a man in prison at Colossae. He's not a prophet. Don't get me wrong. We are not talking about prophet. No. We are talking of a natural spirit of God. He's in prison. The Bible has never spoken of Paul being a prophet. No. But divine purpose and assignment helped him to a responsibility that caused him to oversee. A, when I see people saying overseer of a church, I don't know what they mean by overseer. Because some people just oversee his nice colon and a long suit with nice English. And they say, I'm the overseer of a church. I'm the overseer, the general overseer, bishop, general overseer. Listen, when we say overseer, the word seer there is over prophet. <laughs> the prophet above the ministers. You ought to get to a level where you know what Pastor Emma ate. It's, that's what they call overseeing. That's why he says in Hebrews 13, 17, submit yourselves to those that watch. For they watch over your soul. They watch over. Over your soul. They don't watch your soul. They watch over it. They are above it, but they see it. They have a certain line of responsibility that grants them access into the lives of men. You get it? And the Bible says, as they that must give account, because the responsibility of watching in the spirit gives you also the mandate to account for what you see. How be it so that you can see the lives of men and you can't have the mandate to fix them? That's why Christians commit suicide. Because we don't see. How can your relative commit suicide and you don't see? How can it be so? Our seed cannot be like that. Now I'm not talking of prophecy. Please understand me. I'm talking of a faded flesh and glory. That means that we have all access in the spirit realm. Before they plot, I told people, you know, I, I attended a meeting in one of the Arab nations back in the years. And I came and laid down the plan of the bombings, all of them in Kenya. I went and told the, pa the pastors in Kenya, none believed me. I came back to Uganda. I saw these men blown every other day. Even the second last one, I told these guys in the meeting. I told them they were going to blow them in about a week or two. Bam! And I said, what's wrong with the church? How come we are claiming to see what the sister is putting on, what the brother ate last week, but we don't have men who actually watch over the church? We don't have men who watch over our nation. We don't have men who watch over the city. The Bible says, unless the Lord watches over a city, the city... The watchman watches over nothing. Listen, God is not interested in protecting La Bonita. No, he's interested in protecting the Kampala of La Bonita. That's it. That's why he gave David a city before his seed produced a, a temple. That's it. He said, your seed. He said, I shall give you the city. That's what he told him. Because you, you, you're asking, you want me to give you a temple. I'm not interested in giving you a temple. I'm interested in giving you a city. And your seed shall build a temple in the city. Luke eight eleven. The parable is that the seed is the word. I want to give you Kampala. And your message will give you the church you want in Kampala. Don't ask for a church. Ask for the city. Have a bigger mindset. Ask for the nation. Ask for Africa. Watch over your nation. We don't need a few 17 prophets to see. Listen. Let me, tell you, let me tell you an inclination that has been hitting my spirit some time back. When Elijah runs away from Ahab hmm, and then goes hiding, even though he was a prophet, there was something he couldn't see. You get it? Now it's one thing when a prophet can't see divine purpose. But he can see the provisions which in the end, the man of wisdom called vanities. You get it? 
He hides. The scriptures tell us. God asks him, why are you hiding? He says, they've killed all your prophets. According to prophet Elijah, all the prophets are dead. And then God asks him, what? He says, yeah. And God tells this man, look, for behold, I have 7,000. Something on Elijah's eyes opened. Something on his eyes opened. That is why if you read the scriptures, the moment the Lord told Elijah that, bam, the moment he met Elisha, he cast a mantle. Maybe there was a time he passed Elisha and he didn't know he was a prophet. Maybe. And, and I'm talking of that kind of watching. I'm not just the place of watching prophet Elijah. I'm watching the place where the Lord has to open your eyes that there are 7,000 men. He said, I have hidden. Now, when you talk about hiding, eh? that's also a crazy anointing. Remember the experience of, 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 I think it's Proverbs 27, I think verse 4. He says, for in my day of trouble, he shall hide me in the secret chambers of his tabernacle. He shall hide. Eh? He shall hide. You see, there are many Christians who are visible to attack. In the spiritual, they are visible. When cancer comes, it can see them. When HIV comes, it can see them. When, when accidents come, they are visible. Look at the experience of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I told God, I don't want that glory. I don't want a glory of entering fire and come out not burned. I want a glory that can hide Daniel when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are being sent to burn. That's the one I want. He's, listen, Daniel was the one who introduced Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the king. He was the one who recommended these boys. He was the one, the ringleader. But you realize in that story, Daniel is not mentioned anywhere. Now, when you read that story of the den of lions, I am sure they never saw him. That's what God wants to do. That when they send a demon on you, it comes and says, I hear him preaching La Bonita, but I don't see him. I don't see him. Why? Because the flesh is faded and it's glory. Now Elijah can boast and say I've burnt Baal prophets. But he's running. And at this end, it's when we hear the voice of Elijah saying the chariot of Israel has left. That means the man was an army in Israel fled for dear life because he didn't understand the distinctions of the hidings of God. And there are 7,000 men whom the Lord has hid. They have not bowed to Baal, but when they are looking for whoever has not bowed, they stay standing and nobody sees them. But Nanga, the God we are dealing with man will enter a plane and they won't see him. And look for the empty seat in economy class or first class. And go to the US and preach the gospel. Ah, over who am I speaking to? Over some of you have gone past that. I don't know. But me, this is my line. This, this is higher. I want to believe these things. I am believing them. I am believing them. How can a man be in prison and is beholding the order of church? He knows who is rumamongering. He knows who is gossiping. He knows who didn't play the piano. He knows everything. You get it? By the time he is, he knows who came late. By the time he comes in, he's rebuking. He's saying, you, you came late last week. How? Man of God, you're a prophet. No. <laughs> Paul never claimed the place of prophet. No, he didn't. He didn't claim. He claimed a place of a further place. And that's why you see the experience of a man who is torn betwixt as of to be with the Lord because it's that easy. Or to be in the flesh for your sake. And he says, for I choose to be in the flesh for your sake. It, it was ministry for Paul to spend extra time in the flesh. Why? Because he could easily flip to a certain line where he knows not whether in the flesh or not. And that was the experience of the founder of the New Testament church, Paul. And he said, take it how you build. What do you think I'm talking about? Do men live in foundation? Men live in buildings. That means... When we look at the experience of from glory to glory, God wants to create a certain testimony in the lives of Christians where one day you will see a cockroach in this speaker and then you just pass through the hand and get the cockroach out. (laughs) 
without opening the speaker. And your kid will ask, Daddy, what was that? Tell them we are gods. Of which the scriptures cannot be broken. Because you need to get to the word and break it. You see, many people don't understand now the mystery of how the Bible says that none of his bones shall be broken. He's Christ, which is the word. He says it cannot be broken. He cannot. It cannot. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. God wants to call you to a supernatural lifestyle. Not way of life. But if God forbid you should lose your car, fly out of it before it crashes. Then when you land the other end, people will say, he's a God. Then they ask you, how did you do it? And then you start the gospel. How Jesus, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all of them that were oppressed of it. Look, 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 look at, look at, look at, look at, uh, Stephen. The word Stephanos means approved. You know, Timothy studied the word that you might be. Approved the worker. Stephanos, a worker that accurately divides the word of truth. That you might not be ashamed. That you might be punished for every good work. Look at this young man being arrested for opening blind eyes and making the lame walk. And they put him before the council. And he preaches God from the beginning to the end. And he's received in glory. He, Stephanos literally preached himself to glory. He literally, in fact, for me the most touching experience is when he says that I see the Son of Man God, sorry, standing. Stephen preached until... You know, some of you in your religious second, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting for... Stephanos preached until Jesus stood up and said, Stephen, come home, just, just come home. You're too deep for the earth. The, the flesh must fade away and it's glory. He says, and he being full, of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast in heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus, standing on the right hand of God and saying, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Next verse, what does the next verse say? And then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon with him with one accord. What made them scream? That was the point when his time of the flesh had ended. It had ended. It had ended. Man, the guy went to heaven in style. Simple. He preached something that no human ear could accept. I mean, by the time he had finished, no human ear. Now I understand why Amos 710 says that the land could not bear the word of Amos. God wants to give you a word that no principality can. He wants to give you something that when you say go. It becomes a burden to every demon in Kampala that had to delay any man. Why? Because the words of a man can become too heavy for a city. The words of a man can become too heavy for a nation. The words of a man can become too heavy for a continent. The words of a man can become too heavy for water. Which manner of man is this? That even the seas and the winds obey. It's a manner of a man. It's a manner of a man. He has a certain word. The, by the time the water, by the time he walks on water, water knows he's the son. I, I don't think Jesus says in the name of Jesus. I don't think he says in my name. No, no, no. He, he didn't pre-program himself to walk on water. No. A certain nature of him. I believe when Jesus puts the leg, just the leg on water like, ah, the water remembers this one doesn't sink. Unless he wants to. That's the word called obey, obedience. Upako, right? Where things obey you. Everything in this world is mandated to obey you. That's why he says, you shall rebuke demons and they shall obey. He speaks of a place of not them fleeing only, but obeying you. Have a someone on that. It's called word of faith. God wants to get to a point where by the time you, this, you see these chairs that flip in the bonita. By the time you see it, you just not because it's automatic. No. No. Do 
you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? That's the ministry of the Spirit. And this is what I believe. I believe that we're moving in one of the most remarkable experiences of the Holy Ghost. I, I, the Church of Christ has gone just the place of the anointing going on flesh and dwelling there. No. The Church of Christ has now got into a place where the anointing has to blow the flesh. That we might be men who can have the likeness of a body, but with the total entirety of the spirit. And when that kind of anointing hits our lives, if Enoch walked with God and he was no more, I want to submit to you, God walked in you. This is not a with God walk. This is a God in you walk. For it is God that works in us those to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Uh, this generation is going to see men go through walls. This generation is going to see men escape plane crashes and fall on the ground before the planes crash. This generation is going to see men who they are going to shoot bullets through and they are going to go past them or through them and these men will stand. I don't know whether you believe it. I don't know whether what I'm speaking is a bit too mature for you. But that's the place of knowledge. That's the place of revelation. Now somebody just raise your hands. Spirit of God, we thank you. Power of God, we thank you. Prince of God, we thank you. We receive the portion of the flesh withering and its glory fading because the Spirit of God bloweth on it. That no man in this room shall be limited by human nature. But even as humans, they will do things human beings cannot do. For Jesus says, And the works that I do, you shall do more because I go to the Father. If he walked on water, he expects us to fly on water. He says, And this you shall do and more because I go to the Father. Somebody just raise your hands and receive it. I sense his presence. I sense his glory. It is working in my spirit. It is working in my soul. It is working in my body. It is working in my entity. It is working in my substance. It is working in me. It is working in me. Praise God, it is working in me. Shile I refuse to be limited as a human being. I choose to walk in the freedom of the liberties of the spirit. For he says, as he is, so are we in this world. He says, we shall be judged by the law that set us free. And that is the law of liberty. Child of God, you're free to fly. You're free to walk on water. You're free to go to nations without visas or planes. You're free to do the miraculous. You're free to go through walls. In the name of Jesus, with God, all Things are possible. It is working in me. 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 I want to do something for only two minutes. I'm told there's a little boy who is sick. Are you the one? I want to lay hands on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing. We rebuke and bind and destroy every spirit of infirmity and disease. We command his body to get in order and in line. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak to this body. I speak to her mind. I speak to her head. 
I refuse any afflictions of the devil on her head. In the name of Jesus. If for Devil, you're destroyed. You're destroyed. You're destroyed. You're destroyed in the name of Jesus. your hand. You, yes. In the name of Jesus. The Lord heals you right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. If you're sick of any disease, I want you to, to just raise your hands. You have pain. Let me minister to only this one. Ah, bring her here. Thank you, Lord. Spanero. Shanda. If you're sick, I feel the Lord is healing you. We want to get this leg in order now. Where is the pain? Here. Is it painting? The problem is pain. We're going to read. It broke. So we're going to re get rid of the pain. In Jesus' name. Somebody stretch your hands toward her. God is about to do a miracle. God is restoring this bond. God is restoring this bond. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to start to do something you could never do. Start to do something you could never do. I feel the Lord is healing you right now. I feel the pain is leaving right now. I feel the pain is leaving right now. I want you to do it faster. Do it faster. Do it faster. Worthy is the Lamb. I feel the Lord is healing you. The pain is going. You are holy. I feel the pain is leaving right now. Holy. I feel the pain is leaving right now. with his stick again. You don't need it. How are you feeling? I'm better. You're better. God has healed you. God has healed you. God has healed you. I don't want you to move with that stick again. Could you do that without a stick? Could you move like that without a stick? No? Oh yes. Now you can't. The Lord has healed you. The Lord has healed you. This just stick is not yours. Who did you come with? Don't give her the stick again.
Go and sit. That stick is not yours. It's not yours. It's not yours. The man of God feels that we should pray for anybody suffering with HIV or AIDS. You don't need to raise your hands. Sickle cells, sorry. HIV or sickle cells. You don't need to raise your hands. Eh? All right. In Jesus' name, we rebuke HIV. We rebuke HIV. We, hey, we rebuke HIV. We command it to leave the body. We command sickle cells to get no more. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Listen. I dare you by God to just go for a checkup. Go and they check you. If you have been having any disease, go and they check you. I feel there is somebody right now upstairs. I see fibroids leave. And I am talking of fibroids. In the name of Jesus. 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 I see fibroids leave. I see fibroids leave somewhere up there. The Lord removes fibroids out of you. In Jesus' name. If you are sick, say I receive my healing now. Say I receive my healing now. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are healed. You are healed. Watch that lady who, we, who's, who has lost the cane. You'll see how she's going to be walking tomorrow. Or next Thursday. You'll be surprised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That boy, I don't know, I'm told he had what? Cancer. Sorry? Pass is coming out of his body. Let's see whether pass will come out again. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know why. But the Lord tells me there's another person with a bone problem. Your bones pain inside. Raise your hand. Come and I pray for you. What are they painting now? Your back is painting now. Raise your hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody just raise your hands toward this woman. Devil go. Devil go. We command these bones to get in order. Power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Start to do something your back could not do. Start to do it. Now. Start to do it. 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 The Lord has healed you. How are you feeling? You don't feel any pain anymore. I was not pain. How long couldn't you bend? One week and a half now. One week and a half you couldn't bend. Yes. Clap for Jesus. Let's finish with this one. Yes, what's your problem? Your hip is pain. Alright, but are you feeling pain now? Alright. Hey, hey, sickle cells. Okay. Right now we command sickle cells to lose her. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Yes, what's your problem? In the name of Jesus, we command these legs to get in order and in line. Be healed. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Yes, what's your problem? Your back is paining. You're feeling pain now. Now, now. Are you feeling pain now? Give me this back. I want us to do something that in the name of Jesus raise your hands I want you to count you people I want you to count seven times 
Just say one, two. By the time we get to seven, I want her to check her back. One, two, three, let's go. You're releasing life. Uh huh. Uh huh. Check your back. I want you to do something you could not do anymore. <laughs> Check it. Are you fine? <laughs> You're healed? I am okay now. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's your problem? Huh? It's a back. How long has it been? Huh? Three months of back pain. How do you want this one healed? Huh? Shadow. Okay, where is my shadow? I want you to pass through my shadow five times. One. Two. Two. Mm-mm. Three. Four. Five. You know, you know we are past Peter's glory. Check your back. Start to do something you couldn't do. Start to do something you couldn't do. Check it. Why are you laughing? She can't believe it. She can't believe it. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.